Bernard Henri Levy is here. He is a philosopher, he is an author, and he is my friend. His latest piece appears on the New Republic website under the headline, Shame on Turkey for Choosing the Islamic State over the Kurds. He writes, at this late hour, there is only one way to save what remains of Kavani, and that way is Turkey. He's also written extensively on Europe's duty to take a strong position against Vladimir Putin. His new play, Hotel Europe, is now being performed in Paris. It is a one-man show starring a fictional version of him. It investigates the challenges facing the European project. I am pleased to have Bernard Henri Levy back at this table. Welcome. Thank you. Good to see you, my friend. So first, let's talk about Kavani, and, and how do you see this unfolding? Kobane is a shame, is a shame. In Kobane, you have so great people, men and women, defending their families, their cities, their homes. And you have this terrible Islamic state give, giving the assault against Kobane. Mm. And Turkey closes its border. You have... With the, tanks on the other side. With tanks on the other side, with soldiers on the... with volunteers who are ready to come and defend Kobane, and Turkey closes the border. Turkey, who is, as you know, member of NATO, right. member of a military alliance of NATO. So for me, you remember, 10 years ago, at this table, I came and told you that there was a problem with Pakistani alliance, with America's alliance right. with right. Pakistan. Right. It proved not wrong. Today, I say that there is a real problem with the Turkey alliance. Turkey, if Kobane falls, Turkey will no longer have to be considered as a reliable ally. And we should pose the question of the belonging of Turkey to NATO. I mean, the interesting thing about it, at a moment of this kind of being right up against human catastrophe, uh, what may very well happen, uh, you have somebody, a nation laying conditions on its participation. You have to make a pledge against uh, uh, Assad. You have to put a, a no-fly zone here before we'll participate. And ISIS is knocking on the door of company, Kobani. Of course. Anyway, it's a very complicated story. And it is true, as President Obama said, that it is uh, the most contradictory situation possible. This is true. But for the moment, what we know, that in the front line of the fight against Daesh, Islamic State, right. there is the valiant Kurdistan. The Kurdish people are in the front line. They are fighting for us. Their freedom is our freedom. If they are saved, we are saved. Foley, Haynes, all these beheaded, mm. poor guys, poor heroes, they, the Kurdish people are fighting for their memory. And our ally, Turk, is blocking the Why border. Why do you think they're doing it? They are doing it because they are... Mr. Erdogan, who is a crazy man, has the obsession of a free Kurdistan. Because between free Kurdistan and um, um, a triumphant Daesh, he chooses Daesh. He plays with fire. He plays with devil. He makes the choice, the choice of Islamic State mm. against a free Kurdistan. What we should know, what we know, is that Kurdistan is probably the very model, the very example of this moderate Islam, mm. secular, uh, uh, preaching equality between women and men that we are looking for everywhere. It is here. This moderate Islam is incarnated by this Kurdish resistance. For Mr. Erdogan, this is probably a danger. You think that Iraq will remain a, a unified state or will break up into Kurdistan and, and, Shia, and Shia territories? There is a possibility that it breaks, but there is also a possibility of a great diplomacy led by America, if America has still a great diplomacy, which would consist in saying to the Kurds, we help you in a consistent way, in a solid way, but one condition, is that you maintain the um, regional balance, that you not, don't break the borders and so on. This is a deal which America and Europe could, could do. We come to your rescue, we save Kobane, we save your, your families and your homes, but 
we don't touch the borders in the area. This is doable, but let's try. Mm -hmm. Let's try. Obama, Hollande, European Union, America, I don't know. This is doable. But we need for that imagination and courage. Yeah, but you also need for that troops on the ground, and, and nobody seems to be willing to provide those troops. And in Iraq, you worry about whether the Iraqi army is prepared to do it. You have the troops you have today is Kurds, women, fe male and female. Yeah, but it's is it, that enough to say? If we gave weapons to these women and men soldiers, if we gave r real weapons, it might be enough. Let's try. For the moment... Let me talk about... Uh, first of all, we'll get to Ukraine and the Russian minute. But, but Libya. I mean, you went uh, early to Libya. and It seems now that people look to Libya as a failure. Remember the sentence of uh, one of the prime ministers of Mao Zedong, Liu Shaoxi? Yes. He was asked 20, 30 years ago, what do you think of French Revolution? And he said, come on, it's a little early to say. Yes. It's a little early to say. Two centuries after. So, three years after the Libyan revolution, it is still a little early to call it a failure. For me, what I, what I feel is that you have to compare what is happening in Libya, what is happening in Syria. What is the result of non-intervention? And what is the result of intervention? Result of intervention in Libya is chaos. Result of non-intervention in Syria is chaos, plus 200,000 dead, plus Islamic State. On one side, chaos. On the other side, chaos, 200,000 dead, Islamic chaos State. Chaos on either side. Yes, plus 200,000 dead on the side of the non-intervention. The result of intervention is better than the result of non-intervention. Okay, let's go to Ukraine. You, you have a column that I just referenced earlier uh, in which you call for a Marshall Plan for Ukraine. What's that? I call it a Marshall Plan. It was a, a, a symposium which was held in Vienna organized by a man called Dimitri Firtash uh, with people from Germany, banks, uh, industry, and so on. And I proposed an economic rebuilding of Ukraine based on what? Number one, a World Economic Forum being held in Kiev mm -hmm. and devoted to Ukraine. Number two, uh, bon uh, an issue of bond, a state issue of bonds right. by the state of Ukraine with a, gu with a guarantee yeah. of IMF, you Mrs. Talk about Lagarde. investors and not philanthropists. Of course. If they Phil buy bonds, which is an If investment. they buy bonds, they want a signature. Right. Amer the Fed, the Federal Reserve, the European Bank, and the IMF could, if, if we really want Ukraine to come to Europe, if we really believe in the message of the Maidan, which is my case, which is the case of Mr. Hollande, which is the case of Mr. Obama. Mr. Obama seems to believe that Poroshenko is sincere when he claims that he wants to go out of the hands of Putin and to join Europe. Then we have to pay the price. Why does not the IMF, Bank of, uh, of Europe and Federal Reserve give the signature to a huge issue of bonds by the government of Poroshenko. Mm. This was a proposal I gave in Vienna to this uh, Firtash uh, uh, symposium. Finally, you're making a play in Paris. I tried. I wanted to speak about the fall of Europe. Yeah. You know, like, like a Gibbon, the fall of Roman Empire. Yeah. My feeling, I'm very sad to say that, is that we might be facing the fall of Europe. No common defense, no common economic policy, no common foreign policy. Look in front of Ukraine. The English think about, uh, are concerned about their banks. We are concerned, French, about our Mistral. The Germans are concerned about their uh, gas. No common perspective. So this, for me, is one symptom of the fall of Europe, this great dream. I was bred by this dream of a unified Europe, mm -hmm. real, great, good and, and reliable partner of America. This dream is collapsing today. So I wrote this play 
in order to, to alert, to warn, my, to make a wake-up call to my, foreign, to, to my fellow citizens of Europe on what is happening today. But, but you, the play is about you preparing for speech yeah. uh, at the time, right before World War I? It's, uh, it, no, it's mm -hmm. me. In Sarai, it's supposed to be, the fiction is me, in yeah. Sarajevo. Right, uh, right. at what uh, time? On the day of the one century anniversary of oh, no, World no, 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 War I, right. the hero, the, the character is supposed to deliver a speech on Europe. Big speech, big Europe, values, principles, and so on. He is enclosed in a little room in Sarajevo, which is the room of the Hotel Europe. And he, for the first time in his life, he is a man who speaks easily, <laughs> who writes easily. Mm -hmm. For the first time, he is prevented. He cannot. The speech does not come. All the threads are broken. All this uh, architecture in which he believed so much all his life, he sees it collapsing in front of his eyes. At the end of the play, in the fifth act, at the same time, he becomes mad and he finds the solution. He has the, the vision. vision of the solution for Europe tomorrow. Mm -hmm. This is the end of the play. It's great to see you. Thank you great for coming. To, great to see you back. Uh, the play you. in Paris, if you're in Paris, is called Hotel Europe. Hotel Europe. Bernard Andrelevy, back in a moment. Stay with us. <laughs>